morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Welcome again to Davao Live Online Church Service. I pray and I hope that God will speak to you again today and inspire your heart and would give you comfort through His Word and uh, through worshiping His holy name. But before that, let us meditate on the Word of God here in Psalm 47, verses 1 up to 9. The Word of God says here, O clap your hands, all you peoples! Shout to God with the voice of triumphs! For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great King over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with understanding, God reigns over the nations. God sits on His holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together, the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. The Lord bless His word. Now let's come into the throne of His grace in prayer. Our gracious and loving Father, Thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful time, O oh God. It is a great privilege for us, Lord, to listen to your word, to experience the mighty presence of the Holy Spirit. And Lord God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that you would uh, be pleased, O oh God, through the worship, through the, through the preaching of the word. And may your people, Lord, would be encouraged would be touched by the presence of God, would be comforted through your word. And thank you, God, that you would bless your servant as he preached the word. I pray that the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit would anoint his mouth as he speak the word. Thank you so much, Lord. Bless your people, O oh God, as they listen to your word. Bless each and every one of, God, of us, Lord, as we worship your holy name. All the glory belongs to you alone. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. My name is Harley and I have an issue. Can you Henry? I have two options for jobs. Now, I like this first option. The first option is I could work online, sell it, selling and advertising stuff to people mm -hmm. and earning good money. I mean, it wouldn't last me a long time, but I would earn money for the short term and that's what I want. I want money. But the second option, I'm just like, I don't really want to. I mean, I feel prodded to go. And the second option is in missions. So I could go help in missions. I could go help people. I wouldn't really earn money, but I, you know, I, I really want the money. So I mean, it's like, what do I choose? I might just go for the money. I, you know. Well, for me, I just remember uh, the Bible says in Galatians 5 verse 25, it says there that since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Wow, that's really true. So if I should be keeping in step with the Spirit in my life, yeah. I should listen to the call. And that call in my life would be in missions. Exactly. Not going and making money, because where's that going to get me in life? It won't get me anywhere. Yeah. Thank you, Kuyo Henry, for your advice. Salamat sa ginoo. So, salamat sa ginoo. Yes. That was our behoof this week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, Kuyo Joey here with our Step Up Strength Challenge with Kuyo Henry. Kuyo Daniel in the back. Uh, but first let's get into the memory verse which is found in Galatians 5 verse 25. Since we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Keep that in mind, we've got to live in step with the Spirit, not with the things that we want. Otherwise we'll fall out of line, that's not good, we'll end up in sin. So, this is our Step Up Strength Challenge. I will be recording it today. We've got Daniel and Henry over there. And the challenge is, they will be hanging at the same time with their legs straight forward, holding an L position. And I'll be the judge. And whoever can hold it the longest wins. This is our step up strength challenge. Your legs have to be straight, they have to be straight forward. And we're gonna do this. Three, two, one, legs forward, let's go. Oh, oh. Two legs. Okay, well, keep your legs up. 
<laughs> Come on, straight forward, straight forward. Think about ah, oh, okay, good yeah. Good job. Good job. <laughs> So that was our step up strength challenge. Try it for yourselves. Send it down below. Yes. It's pretty tough. <laughs> and tell us how you did. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hello and welcome to Davao Alive Church Online. I'm Pastor Wood and I'm so excited you've come to join us today. Wherever you're watching from, whether you're here in the Philippines or anywhere around the globe, you are most welcome. And I pray that God blesses you as we enter in and dig into his truth today. Today, I want to start with a little acronym called START. And the title for this mini series is How to Start and Maintain Good Habits or potentially break some bad habits in our lives today. What it means to actually get going, because when you have a habit, it's because you want to achieve something, you want to attain a goal, you start a new habit. First thing that comes to mind is probably New Year's habits my New Year's resolution, my fitness goal, my post-COVID or my during COVID um, new goals and targets. And so therefore, I'm going to start some new habits. And then often what you find are people don't survive. They break those habits pretty quickly. So today I want to break down <clears throat> some key things and some key scriptural foundations that we can apply to our lives in order to not only start, but maintain good habits that bring true transformation in our lives and to those around us. So, first of all, to start a good ha habit, there's that word start. So I want to start with the acronym S, S for significance. And then over the following weeks, we'll break down what T, A, R, and T will be. But today I want to say that to have and to maintain or to even get going with any habit to bring transformation and change, it needs to start with significance. Because significance is better than success. Success comes and goes, but living a life of significance brings true uh, transformation that lasts beyond our lifetime here and gives you the motivation to not only continue what you've started, but to push through through the hard times. Because so often we get stuck because we're just looking for immediate gratification, immediate success. So in anything in life you're focusing on today, I want to challenge you and I to live a life of significance and not focus on a life of success. Success is momentary. Significance leads to a life of legacy. What I mean by that is this. When you live for significance. You're going to live beyond. I mean, all of us here have a finite time that we're going to die. I know that sounds grim, but we all have a finite time that we're going to move on into eternity. Now, significance will bring something that's greater than your time here on earth. It will have a effect into all of eternity, thereby leaving a legacy beyond yourself, beyond your time here on earth. So what I want to discuss is what the Bible and what God looks at and looks for in our hearts and in our lives in order to live lives of significance. Because I believe that when we look and focus on lives of significance, based out of what God has said, based out of our identity in Christ, then truly we will leave a life of legacy and live a life of legacy for future generations to follow after. So <clears throat> today, when I, when I say focus our eyes on significance, that will bring true motivation. This will be the source of our mojo to keep going. Think about this. Let me read this out of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, or in another translation, as is the habit of some. But encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. You see, good habits start with good discipline and focus on being around God's people. God has called you not to be an individual, but to be a people, a church, a body. So often when we start habits, we think, well, it's all on us. It's on our, on our own. Think about this, right? When you are in an say, a, a healthy fitness regime. I remember when we were really involved with CrossFit here in Davao City. It was motivating to be with a group of people 
that motivated one another to keep pushing through, to keep pushing through the pain barrier, to turn up, to keep coming up during the week to say, hey, are you being faithful in the kitchen and are you being faithful in the gym? So what you eat is what you become. All of these things, we would encourage each other. We would share testimonies. We would share hardships. We would we would kind of yell at each other in a good way saying, come on, keep pushing through, push through. If you don't have those voices around you, it's really difficult to keep yourself motivated to push through to the next level. You see, because when we create habits, it's because we want to see transformation either in our bodies, our hearts, our minds, our lives, our businesses, our marriages. You see, whatever you're looking to change today begins with changing your habits your daily habits. And in order to maintain your habits, you have to have motivation. And so today our motivation needs to come out of our purpose, our identity in whom God has called us to be, not to do, but to be. And therefore he's shown us the way to take a li- to, to make a life of significance and legacy. You see here, good habits will truly start with discipline, but it needs a community. It says in the word of God, without wise leadership, this is in Proverbs eleven fourteen. without wise leadership, a nation falls, but there is safety in having many advisors. Or in another version, there is safety in the counsel of many. So you see, today I want to ask you this question. Are you a lone ranger? Are you finding yourself in a place where you're trying to find transformation, but you're doing it alone? God hasn't called us to be alone. He's called us to be in community, to be part of a body with one head. That's Christ. So the first thing I want to ask you today is, are you finding yourself alone? Maybe you're, you're not liking the community you're with. You're not really appreciating the church you're around. And so therefore, you're trying to do it on your own. I will do this my way. You see, God is calling you to be part of family. Family is a picture of God's family. Here on earth is a reflection of who we are with with God through Christ Jesus. We have been adopted into His family. So what family are you hanging with today? Because you see, habits can be good and habits can be bad. If you're around the wrong kind of family, the wrong influence, what kind of habits do you think you're going to form? Obviously, wrong ones and bad ones. If you're around people that don't want to get fit, what are you going to do? Probably not get fit, or it'll be really difficult to motivate yourself when all your friends are not doing the same kind of things. So you see, a life of significance has to have purpose. So what's your purpose? What's the reason why you want to make these habits, therefore change something in your life today? And it's, <clears throat> and it's easy to try to start something on your own. But it's really hard to maintain it when you don't have a purpose or a vision or a motivation and don't have accountability. Like I said, with the CrossFit picture, we are accountable to one another. We will quickly see whether we're doing or we're living what we're saying. It's easy to speak, but your words have to be backed up by your actions. And it needs people, accountability. With the body of Christ, we are accountable to one another to love more deeply, to walk with holiness, to be separate. You see, now to have a life of significance, it must begin with purpose. And that purpose has to come out of your identity. What you believe you are, who you believe you are, determines what you do. Just pause for that on a second there. If you believe that you are called to be a great athlete, if you believe that you have the DNA and the calling of a great poet or a businessman or um, whatever it is that you're chasing after in life, What you believe is what you start to focus on. What you believe is what you start to shape your life around, what you start to meditate upon day and night. See, what I want to challenge you and I today is what we believe has to be birthed out of who God has said we are. Our purpose begins in our identity in Christ. It begins with whom God has called us to be, not what we want to be. Today, Purpose must be bigger than yourself. To leave a life of legacy means it's something beyond your time here on earth. None of us are going to live forever in our flesh. Only in our spiritual renewed bodies will we have an eternal life. And whether you choose Christ or not determines where you live that eternity, in the presence of God or outside of the presence of God. I pray that all of you that are listening today would come to know the love that Christ has shown by shedding his blood on the cross for you and I today so that you would live a life of eternity in the presence of a loving, gracious Father. But today, I want to say this. We can earn things here on earth. You can, 
You can earn a good reputation by your hard works. You can earn a good reputation by your tenacity to get things done. But you can't earn purpose in Christ. That was purchased by Christ and Christ alone. We can't earn a legacy because we did something great here on earth on our own strength and our own merit. We can only receive that as a free gift from what Jesus did on the cross when he died for you and I, when he made a way for you and I to become sons and daughters adopted into the family of God. You must understand that true purpose has to be bigger than yourself. That's the only way you can truly motivate yourself to bring true change and transformation in your life. See, the problem is today in the world is that we are so self-focused and so self-centered. You look at social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, everything is about me, 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 and me. What I need is what I'm going to get. What I want is what I'm going to chase after. But Jesus, you see, his life was the opposite. He laid down his life for others. He came to serve, not to rule and to reign. He came to give his life so that you and I would have access back to a loving relationship with our heavenly father. His life was baliktad, like they say here in the Philippines, upside down in the terms of the worldly wisdom. He lived a life of true legacy. What's his legacy? That we are all living in the wake of his sacrifice, that we are all living um, in, in, in relationship with God because he made the way, the truth, and the life through Christ. You see, the legacy that we leave will affect generations to come. What you decide today, your good habits or your bad habits, will affect the generations to come. Your friendships, your family, your children, what you do and how you love, and your purpose and your motivation will affect future generations. It's not just about you today. That's the key. To truly have a good and start a good habit. Significance begins with purpose, which is birthed out of our identity in whom God has called us to be. So who you believe you are determines what you end up doing or running towards. Let me read this to you out of Proverbs 23 and verse 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh, so he is. James 4 and verse 2 says this, you want uh, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. You see, if it's all about yourself, you're forgetting God in this equation of life and legacy and significance. If you're just thinking, I see what others have and I want what they have, rather than seeking God as to whom He's called you to be, because all of us are made for a purpose. We are made by perfect design. There's no one here watching or listening that is an accident. Regardless of the circumstances you've come through or come out of, God has a perfect plan for you. But you see, the question is this, are you involving God in your equation? Are you trying to seek the Creator for what your purpose is? Because your purpose will determine the motivation to create new habits to live a life of significance or not. Like I said earlier, success is momentary. Significance leads to legacy. And that is what our goals should be in our lives today. What kind of legacy are you leaving? If you're living a life of debauchery and brokenness, and you, and you have children and all they see is that, what do you think is going to become to the future generations? You see, we need to be examples. And to do that, it cannot happen with our own good deeds, our good works. Like I said, we can't earn this purpose, this legacy. It is a gift. But what we can do is decide to either obey or rebel against the commands of God. You see, God is a God of love, but He's also a God of justice. He cannot walk where there is darkness. He is pure and holy and set apart. We can't live in that gray zone. You see, like <clears throat> in CrossFit, I'll keep using this example. We used to say this with my brother Paul, or, or he used to go, you need to be faithful in the gym more than you are in the kitchen more than you are in the gym. Meaning what you eat at home is 60 to 70 percent more important than how hard you work out. So what are you ingesting? What kind of things are you putting into your life today 
that will help you to transform your tomorrow and your legacy beyond yourself. You see, purpose is bigger than you and I. But what you believe is truly what you be start to do and to become, then what are you believing today? What kind of words and things are you meditating on? This is another reason. If people are saying, well, I've always been like this. I've never been able to do this. It's because of my family upbringing. It's because of my circumstances. It's because of my friends that I'm around. It's because of X, Y, and Z. All these excuses. I, I don't have enough uh, money, so I can't give generously. I can't change my life. But God says, be a man or a woman of generosity, just like God was. If you want to see no love, you need to lay down your life for others. You see, what you need is Christ. What you need is the spirit of the living God. These identities, these I don't have or I can't or I won't because of, these excuses are all identity based out of fear. Because if I do this, this always happens. When I've done this, this has happened in the past. You see, God is saying when you come in into a full relationship with the loving God, you are no longer your old self. You are a new creation. The old is gone. No longer in condemnation. Then you start to live a life of I am a child of God in Christ. I am a, you see, rather than I'm afraid of or I don't do that because of X, Y, and Z. Today, whatever you're facing, if you're facing a battle in your marriage, if you're facing a battle in your workplace, your family, your home, if you're facing depression, depressive thoughts, thinking, man, I'm not sure that I'm good enough. I'm not sure that I have any value. I have good news for you today. God came and died for you. Jesus himself laid down his life with your name on his lips, in his heart, knowing that you and I could only enter in because of that gift of his shedding of his blood. What a liberating thought <clears throat> that good habits start with our identity from a free gift that comes from God. But the choice is this, our free will to decide to live for Christ or to live for self. You see, this is an identity based out of the love of God. God loves me, therefore he died for me. Not because I did anything good, not because I deserve it, but because God's love is greater than my sin and my stupidity. You see, today, God wants you to understand that your identity is based out of His love. Not out of religion and good works and acts and deeds, but out of His love. Those good works and acts and deeds are an overflow as we accept the love of Christ in our life today. That is the beginning of understanding who we are. His love draws us in, shapes us to be like Him, and His perfect love will cast out all fear. Those I can't, I won't, I've always been are based out of fear. If you want to get rid of that, if you want to get rid of those habits because you're stuck in a cycle, allow the love of God to fill your heart today. Allow God's love to start giving you purpose and to shape you into whom He has made you to be. He's the potter where the clay. Let Him mold your life. Trust the Creator of the heavens and the earth. You see, when you walk as a child of God, you can begin to speak truth over those things and those areas in your life where you've lived in fear, where you've lived in a hopelessness, where you potentially live in a lack of motivation to change because it never changes. Just like I've said before, you can't just deal with the symptoms of life. Why am I always finding myself in these negative bad habits? Why am I always finding myself in these circles of life where I start good and it, and it, it, it comes back up? That's because you're only dealing with the surface. You're not dealing with the root. And we're going to look at that in the moment because the root is sin. It's not the problems in life, but it's sin. It's an act of rebellion against the very commands that God has given you and I to repent, to turn away from our sins and allow Christ to rule and reign. Not my will, but yours be done. You see, that will begin the life of transformation that will truly kickstart and charge new habits that bring transformation and ultimately significance and legacy in our lives. When those thoughts come and hit you, you need to understand the Word of God and say, you know, like in 2 Timothy 1.7, you can say to those thoughts, of fear. You can say, for God has not given me a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and love. And here's the word, self-discipline. Habits come with self-discipline. But you understand that God is saying it comes with the power through the love of God. 
You see, if you want to have the power to change and start new habits in your life, you need to understand the love of God, the grace and the mercies of the Creator. Today, we need to break down these hard shells in our hearts, in our eyes, these scales that blind us from the very love of God. He's not come here to, to make you feel bad. He's come here to reveal His perfect love, to cast out all fear, to show you that He's giving you a purpose beyond yourself. We are part of His family, not called to be lone rangers in life today. You see, when you believe who you are in Christ, then you begin to walk as a son and a daughter of the living God. Therefore, those excuses will melt away. Those problems will become much less. You'll start to look at those fears and say, no, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So you can speak to the mountain of fear in your life and say, I can break that because God is in me. His spirit empowers me. When we set our goals in whom God has said you are, then all of these things we do in life today start to have a life or a purpose that's beyond ourselves. You can become the greatest athlete for yourself, for your self-worship and raise yourself up. But if you know that God has called you to be set apart, a child, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, called for such a time as this, the very purpose that you do that athletics work or your business or your whatever you're involved in as a teacher, as a worker, whatever it is, starts to have a significance that's greater than yourself, that's greater than this moment, because it has a significance that leads to a legacy that has a generation transformed for the living God, that has a lifestyle that has more meaning than just self-gratification. Who are you in Christ? Let me throw out a few who I am in Christ to you. And then what I want you to do is as I say these, these are all out of scripture, you can start to say, do I look at my life? Am I identifying in these who I am in Christ or am I identifying in whom people are forcing me to be or influences online are pushing me towards because that's what I'm meditating on. That's what I'm eating in the kitchen of my spirit and my soul and my mind. Today, I want you to start eating and dining on the feast of truth of who God has called you to be. Should you choose to obey and follow him with all your heart, soul and strength today? God wants to bring freedom into your life. He wants to help you break those habits, but not just break habits, but start new habits that live a life of significance. If you're facing a mountain of fear through health issues today. God says that you are alive and that you are, he's called you to be a man and a woman full of life and overflow. How can that look in your life today? Well, you need to speak and understand the truth of who you are in Christ. Let me throw a few I am's in Christ to you. Who I am in Christ. I am God's child. I am Christ's friend. I have been justified. I am united with the Lord and one with Him in spirit. Isn't this powerful? Just listen. I have been bought with a price. I belong to God. Doesn't that change the way that you look at life today? These are all scriptural references. I am a member of Christ's body. I am a saint. Those things where I'm always bad, I've never been good. You see, when you accept Christ into your heart, you are justified and daily He sanctifies, He transforms you and He gives you a purpose beyond yourself. I have been adopted as God's child. I have direct access to God through the Holy Spirit. Wow! For those of you that think, well, God is so far away, the access is through Christ by His Spirit today. There's hope, guys. Whatever you're going through today, God wants to bring transformation and change. I am secure in Christ. If you're living with any fear today, here's a few I am's. I am free forever from condemnation. I am assured that all things work together for good. I am free from any condemning charges against me. Wow! I cannot be separated from the love of God. You see, these are truths that we need to build our lives on. These are our identity blocks. These are our cornerstones from which we can live a life of significance and therefore live a life of legacy. I am confident that the good work God has begun in me will be perfected. What God has started, He will complete. And whatever, whatever God finishes, it is always good. You may be going through a valley of a shadow of death today, but understand this, when He brings you through to those green pastures, it is always good. God is triumphant over our lives, regardless of what you're looking at. I am a citizen of heaven, not of earth. 
Again, that will transform the way you look at what you do and who you are. God is interested in you being in Christ, not just doing th things for Christ. I can find grace and mercy in my times of need. I am born of God and the evil one cannot touch me. You can't touch this. Do, 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 do. You can dance that. When you think that I'm being attacked by the fiery darts of the enemy, you can say, you can't touch this. You can't touch me. I'm a child of God. You see, the I am's begin to transform your identity. What are you feasting on today? I'm just throwing a few of these I am's to you, and I know it should kickstart and charge your spirit. Those thoughts of, I'm not good enough. What are you talking about? When you give your life to Christ, He gave His life for you. Even when we didn't deserve it, that's how good God is. I am significant in Christ. If you think that you are insignificant, that you're a tiny ant in this huge world, or that your circumstances have squashed you, let me throw you a few of these. I am the salt and the light of the earth. These are the things that God is giving you purpose for. This is what gives you significance. This is what builds legacy. I am a branch of the true vine, a channel of his life. I have been chosen and appointed to bear fruit. God has called you to bear fruit, not just to survive. He's called us to thrive and to bear fruit and to bring life to those around us. I am God's temple. I don't belong to myself. This is the temple of the living God. That will determine the very things and the habits and the motivation of what you do in your life today when you meditate on these truths. I am a minister of reconciliation. If you're living in a place where it's all falling apart, understand that God has called you to be the answer. You carry the truth and the kingdom of God within you. Learn to listen to the Spirit of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to empower you and release the fullness of life that God has given you to those around you. I am God's co-worker. We are partners in the kingdom advancement of Christ. Isn't that amazing? What's your purpose? You think, well, I don't know what I'm made for. You are made by the living God to declare the good news of the kingdom of God, to bring reconciliation from man to God by, by the blood and the love of Christ. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. I am God's workmanship. You are perfectly and wonderfully made. God chose you. God knows you. And God has a purpose and a plan for you. The question is this. Are you even involving God in your habits today? Are you even chasing after God for what your purposes are for today? From the mundane to the sublime. From the daily work, if all labor is worship unto God, are you involving God in your absolute daily walk? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. These are scriptures, these are truths that should kickstart and charge who you are, which determines your purpose in life, which determines how you live a life of legacy through a life of significance. You won't achieve significance, purpose, or legacy in your own strength only by the Spirit of God, only by the gift that's freely given by God. It says this in Zechariah 4 and verse 6, Then he said to me, This is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. It is not by force, not by might, not by strength, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. You see, God is telling you, you can't achieve this in your own strength. Praise God for that, because I know that if I try to achieve this life of significance and purpose in my own strength, I'm going to be like those guys that keep falling in bad habits. I kickstart my New Year's resolution. I fail within three, five, ten days. Here's my 30-day plan. Within ten days, you've fallen apart already. Why? Because in our own strength, we are weak. But in our weakness, He is made he is declared to be strong. His spirit will empower us. You see, you can't force good habits on yourself. It's only by the spirit of God. You can't start a life of significance and legacy on your own strength or your own merit. It needs the very spirit of God. So what does that mean? When we are filled with the spirit of God, that means that our temples have to be pure and holy. That's how we live a life of significance, by pushing through, knowing that it's bigger than ourselves, knowing that when you're doing that last push-up to get through the barrier of life, whatever that is, and you're thinking, my arms, my whole body, my soul is shaking. I don't think I can do this. God says, I am with you. I've given you everything you need. I'm giving you every strength, every cover, every protection. My presence is around you. My love will cast out all fear. Push through, son. Push through, daughter. 
Don't give up. You see, so often we give up because we only think about ourselves. When we are motivated by others, we push through. Think about it. If my children were in trouble in a building and I was maimed and hurt and there was a fire, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to do everything I can. I'm not just going to give up and say, oh, my leg is hurting. My back has been scarred. I'm going to crawl. I'm going to push. I'm going to kick. I'm going to scratch. I'm going to bite. I'm going to push through because I love someone greater than I love myself. This is the love that Christ has shown you and I. And this is the same motivation that our love for Christ in response should be. And that is our motivation for living a life of purpose and legacy. It says in James 1 and verse 2, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity of great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your um, endurance is, is fully developed, you will be perfect, complete, lacking for nothing. Wow! God is saying, if you want to be perfect, complete, and needing nothing, lacking for nothing, push through. Count it all joy when those hardships come, when you have that pain threshold in life, when you have that wall you got to get over and you're exhausted. Say, God, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. Help me, fill me, help me to walk with your power today, Lord God. And you know where it all starts? It starts with a heart of repentance, a heart of obedience. We only have two choices to the commandments of God. We either obey or we rebel. So often we call problems in our lives, what, but what, you know, the hardships, we call them problems. We don't really identify them as sin. You see, call sin a sin so that you can be dealt with it. Why bother just dealing with the symptom so you can come up again? You need to deal with the root issue, and that root is sin. You see, if you allow those secret things in your life to keep festering, those thoughts that are ungodly, those actions that are done in secret in the darkness that you don't want the light to shine on, then you will always have like that chain in your life. You'll be wondering why do these things keep coming up? Just like a bad patch up job on a car of a rust. If you don't cut out the rust, it'll always bubble through. It may look good for a season. We can cover our lives with pretentious or good habits in our own strength, but eventually we fall apart and that root of sin, that rust in our lives will still come through. I've described it like this before. You ever played that game of whack-a-mole? And you have a hammer and then you smack this little mold that keeps coming up and you have to keep smacking it and it never ends. Well, you need to get to the root of that mold and cut it off. You see, in life, we need to get to the root of sin in order to stop it keep popping up, in order to stop those bad habits that keep attacking us. You see, we need to come to a place of repentance. We need to come to a place where we confess and we confront the very things in life that have stopped us from being everything God has called you to be. You see, until we come to a heart of repentance, a full on our knees job and say, God, I'm sorry for the things I've made it. I choose you today afresh. Until we get to that point, we can't fully live a life of legacy and significance today. It starts with our hearts. It starts with a heart of full transformation through repentance and accepting Christ to rule and reign fully. So what areas in your life are you holding on to today? Perhaps there are areas of unforgiveness, areas of bitterness, anger, disappointment. You see, those I am's I mentioned earlier, that's what you need to focus on. Don't chew on bitterness. Don't chew on envy. Don't eat anger. Don't eat unforgiveness. Say, God has forgiven me, so I will forgive. Eat the truth. Feast on the goodness of God today. It says that His goodness and mercies are chasing you regardless of where you are today. God's goodness and mercies are available right now. But you need to confront those sins. We need to confess those sins. Call sin a sin and not just a bad habit or a problem. This demands you to repent. You either obey or you rebel from God's commandments. Do you see how simple it is? As humans, we try to overcomplicate our lives. We try to live a religious life thinking doing good works will save us. No one is good, only Christ. He's the only way, the truth and the life. You see, with a problem, you can try to find a workaround for it. Like I said, the whack-a-mole or that picture of, of uh, rust on a car surface. If you call sin just a problem, you will try to patch it up 
And perhaps there are areas in your life today that the Holy Spirit's revealing that you've been trying to patch up. I want to encourage you, church, don't do a patch-up job. Go to the root and allow God to transform you. The great creator, the mechanic, the greatest mechanic. He knows our bodies in and out. He knows every hair on your head and every fa- hair on your face. If you've got a beard like mine, he knows every one of these. God loves you so much that he knows you intimately more than you know yourself. And he wants to give you a life of significance, purpose based out of who he's called you to be so that you would leave a legacy in partnership with God. We are co-workers with Christ, co-heirs. Isn't that amazing? That's your purpose. Whatever you're doing today is to glorify God. It's all about Jesus, not about you. You see, when we start to raise up our perspective that it's not about us, those things that have hurt us or maybe offended us or made us angry and we want to lash out, we begin to become more like Christ and understand the bigger picture. Hey, I want to leave a legacy. Hey, I'm going to love more deeply. Hey, I'm going to walk with more humility today. Rather than lashing out, I'm going to serve. I'm going to let the love of God draw people, not my righteous anger. You see, God has called you to live a life of difference, set apart, holy significance. So today, in closing, I want to encourage us guys to do these three things, these four things. We need to pray. We need to praise. We need to confess. And we need to confront. Pray, praise, confess, and confront. And I'm going to read a scripture out of James, and you're going to see how this works in our lives today. And I pray that God would break through your heart. Almost listen to this as I read this and pray it out in your life. Ask the Holy Spirit to continue to reveal areas where we need to pray, to praise, to confess, and to confront so that we would truly live a life of significance that leaves a legacy birthed out of purpose, out of our identity in God. I know that's a mouthful, but your identity determines your purpose, which determines what you do in terms of your motivation to have a life of significance, which leaves a legacy of godliness and holiness for future generations to come. Come back to the love of God today. Let me read this. James chapter 5, verse 13 to 20. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? you should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. This is what I said. You're not called to be a lone ranger. God has called you to be part of a people, a church, a body. Reach out. Don't find yourself alone today. Trust God's process by allowing yourself to be around men and women that give you wise, godly counsel. Let's continue. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Let me, let me say that again. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was as human as we are. And yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. My dear brothers and sisters, If someone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back from wandering will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. Isn't that a powerful scripture? That's James 5, verse 13 to 20. Living a life of significance with purpose birthed out of your identity in whom Jesus Christ has called you to be brings power in your life today to bring true transformation, to change life. But it starts out of a heart of obedience and repentance, not of a heart of rebellion and pride. Therefore, to leave a legacy for Christ today, guys, to start habits that are godly and good, come back in obedience to our loving God and say, God, 
I come and I repent, I confess, I confront these sins. I go to those brothers that I maybe have never forgiven or I need to ask for forgiveness from. I want to reset today and God will fill you with His Spirit. And with that, you will walk with power and His might today. So today, church, I pray that that challenges you in your starting of good habits by living a life of significance. Remember, it starts in Christ and it's always about Christ Jesus living inside of you and I today. God bless you and I'll see you next next week as we break down the next letter of the letter T. God bless. Come on, let's just enter in right now, church, in response and say, God, I'll give you everything because he deserves it all. Say, God, my heart is yours completely. Let this be the answer in your heart today. Amen. We worship you, Lord Jesus. I'll give you everything, Lord Jesus. I'll give you everything.
are yours.
have my heart, yes, I offer it to you, oh, oh, you can have my heart, all of it, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, oh, oh, Deserve the praise, you were worthy of it all. You were worthy of it all. Only you deserve the glory. Only you deserve the praise. Oh, sing it one more time with you. Oh. 